Oil & Gas Investor's exclusive Premium Blend video series presents in-depth conversations with executives in e and finance, transactions, and technology. What did you find interesting about the industry while writing your book, Oil Capital? One of the great things about it was just researching and reading about all these individuals, both on the producer side, where there are a lot of stories about wildcatters and the big rich and the famous uh, oil men, but there's not as many stories about the, the stalwart bankers who are back there keeping them, uh, keeping the producers afloat with capital. One of the interesting things that I learned from the research was that the uh, banking side of the industry couldn't get going until the producers got their act together and that was only brought about through regulation. And you think of the oil industry as being anti-regulation, but in fact, were it not for the regulations of the 1930s that controlled this uh, flood of, of production every time a new field was discovered, which caused the price to, col to collapse to 10 cents and sometimes less than 10 cents a barrel, the producers were, were driving themselves into bankruptcy through their own success. And, and the East Texas field uh, really gave the impetus for the regulators, um, the producers, the courts to finally figure out some solution to control production, both f to prevent physical waste, but also to prevent economic waste. That story hasn't really been told. Uh, maybe there's not a lot of audience for that story, but to me it's really fascinating how the independent producers who were against the government control in any possible way needed ultimately to have the governmental regulations to bring some sanity and order to their markets so that they could then continue to access capital. How is lending different in this downturn as compared to lending during past downturns? Nowadays you can protect to a degree with hedging, uh, other financial tools, uh, so that if it was a short downturn, the hedges would have protected us. And then another way it's different is the capital structures this time around are much more complex. In the 1980s, you had the producer, his trade creditors, and his banker. And, 20, and now you have the producer, his trade creditors, his banker, his second lien banker, his first tranche of public debt, his second tranche of public debt, and it gets very complex. And in order to work out a resolution with such a complex debt capital structure, companies are, are finding the only way to get it resolved is through the bankruptcy process. And so we've seen a lot of bankruptcies this time around. And interestingly, unlike prior downturns, where you had bankruptcies, they often would be situations where they're basically a, a liquidation. Here, nobody wants to liquidate in a downturn market, so the restructuring is to take the debt, convert it to equity, and hold on for a while in an expectation that the markets will turn around. And when markets turn around, then, then the debt holders will try to recover a greater portion of their original investment. What innovations in lending have you come across while researching the industry for your book? Well, researching the history of capital to the oil and gas industry uh, highlights a number of innovations that have occurred over time. Originally, it was basically a reserve-based loan where producer would come to the banker and say, I got these five wells. Here's how much production is going to come out of it. What will you loan me? And the banker says, I'll give you $5 million. Money's handed over. It's a term loan. The producer has to pay it back within five years and he goes off with that $5 million and drills more wells. That worked great from the 1930s up through the 70s, but in the 70s, the price of oil started to fluctuate much more than it had historically prior to that time. And so the producer that got the $5 million for his five wells, uh, six months later was looking at the price of oil and said, you know, if I had gone a little bit later to the bank, I would have gotten $10 million or $15 million. I want more money for these wells that I've just borrowed against. And the banker said, well, I've loaned you the money you were going to get. It was a term loan. So, you know, come back with some more wells and I'll, I'll loan you more money. And, and that fluctuation in prices actually 
I think gave rise to what we now have as the as the uh, market for energy lending, which is a reserve-based revolver that's based on a borrowing base structure, not based, not a term loan that's fixed. And so as the price of oil fluctuates, in the producer's mind, it fluctuates on the upside, or his production increases, then he can access more capital under the same uh, loan agreement. Whereas previously, he'd have to come back in and renegotiate and redocument in the entire loan. Uh, so that, is, that was the major innovation. Where will future financing come from as the industry goes through the current recovery? But I think it's really private equity that's going to be the next round of capital for this recovery. Notwithstanding the fact that private equity is probably some of the biggest losers in the latest downturn, I think they uh, will, will step up again and will provide the financing one interesting issue that's only recently come up is the federal regulatory structure that may uh, diminish the bank's desire to get into energy lending based on the OCC guidelines that restrict, they don't restrict loans, but they will, uh, the guidelines for classifying loans to the extent they exceed a certain debt to EBITDA ratio, it's going to make it difficult for banks to make conforming loans to producers for some time. To stay up to date on the most recent Heart Energy videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here.